Hi, I'm Dana and I'm here with you today looking a bit crappy because I feel pretty crappy because as of filming this, we're like a little over halfway through the day on what is my mother's birthday. And if you're new or if, I mean, I haven't gone into detail on it, but it's coming up to the next month will be a year since I just went no contact with my mother after seeing her every single day for many, many years. So it's a little bit weird to now be sat here on a birthday having not bought anything, having not given her a card, not even messaging her happy birthday. Because I don't want to, I don't want to contact my mother. But I also feel a massive amount of guilt and just like shittiness over it. I feel really, really awful about it. And I mean, when I felt awful and weird about being autistic, I started making videos. And now I feel a lot better about it. And there's lots of people that say they that's that's been really helpful to them in the like when they're in the same position that I was and I feel like from what I've seen from other people online recently there's a lot of people in the same position as me that have either like recently or are about to or a long time ago cut their parents off for whatever reason and um I feel like it's just now as we're like approaching the year mark that I'm starting to like really process it and really like sort of gain a deeper understanding of how I feel about it and what pushed it to come to this and a lot of things about it like it's it's just settling in essentially I think and I feel really weird about it being a birthday but I've been doing a lot of thinking about it because I was very nervous to talk about this and also like my past relationships and things like that I'm very anxious of talking about things that involve other people because it's not just my thing, it's not just my story, it's not just here's my experience, you know, like it's my experience but it's shared by them so it feels a bit wrong to talk about it without asking people and like making sure they're okay with it but I'm slowly coming to the point like if people didn't want me to tell the world about the things they did maybe they shouldn't have fucking done those things. And all in all, I just don't see why oversharing on the internet is a bad thing when it can be actually really helpful and really insightful and help people a lot. I know it's helped me a lot. I know that I really like appreciate people that overshare essentially. And I don't really understand the boundaries around sharing and oversharing. I will share pretty much anything. There's just certain things that I've come to realise tend to be a taboo in society. That's to come though. In this video, I really specifically want to focus on the guilt because I feel so guilty about not having messaged her saying happy birthday. And it's like, I didn't message her saying Merry Christmas. I haven't messaged her anything in over a year. She's messaged me like two or three times once saying Merry Christmas and a couple of other times she's been like, oh, love you, miss you. And it, it's not enough. It's not fucking good enough now. And it's like, I'm not a child, but in this situation, I'm the child, I'm her child. I shouldn't have to be the one that's like reaching out and fixing things and I shouldn't have had to be the person that was you know looking after her and being the emotional support and all of the other things that led to me not speaking to her anymore it was inappropriate and it wasn't okay and it was really mentally distressing to me and yet I feel really guilty for not talking to her anyway like I feel really guilty for not having her be a part of my life and for not just putting up with it and getting on with it because she's my mother you know, like I went up to, like I moved house. I convinced my partner at the time to move house so that we could be closer to my mother. So that every single day for like, I want to say maybe four years, like there was the very occasional time that I didn't, but more or less every single day I would go up and see her. And I didn't enjoy it. Like she acted like I was just going around for a cuppa and a smoke, but there was always something that I needed doing. Or she she just gave me things that I didn't want. And sometimes it was just a gift for no reason and other times it would be like weeks later she'd be like oh you never paid me back for that and it's like because i didn't fucking ask for it like there was always an issue there was always something that i had to do for her. always like you know there was always some sort of emotional or physical labor to be done and it always fell to me and it wasn't fair i've got really caught up in things and i've forgotten what my point was going to be fuck yeah, I think a lot of it's, it's like when I get sad about the situation, it's often because I'm very like, you know, she's my mother. She's the one person that is supposed to always, always love me unconditionally, no matter what. And it feels kind of cruel to be expecting that from someone without giving it back. You know, like, shouldn't I love my mother no matter what? I'm going to expect that from her. And like, I mean... 
a tough one because I'm assuming, like, I'm putting out like she doesn't love me because I don't think that you treat someone the way that I was treated if you love them. But I also love my mother very, very deeply. But if I was in her shoes, I'd be like, well, you don't treat someone you love like that. So it's it's just such a complex relationship anyway. And there's not really a point to that. I haven't forgotten my point. There's just not really a point to that one. It's just a very complex relationship. And that leads to lots of like very deep, complex feelings that I really struggle with. I suppose it's like the breakups for most people. Like both of, I've only been to relationships and both of my breakups have been very like, I'm just so over being around this person and the way this person's treating me. That breaking up is actually like a massive relief and I'm like, oh, thank, thank God I did that. And as much as I didn't really enjoy a lot of the time that I spent around my mother, I really don't feel like that with this. Like, I mean, that's the thing with abusive people, isn't it? Is that some of the times that I spent around her were like so nice and I felt so loved and I felt so cared for and looked after and safe. And it always turned out to like, be making up for something or to be like an apology for something or to be to soften me up for what was to come it was never just to have a nice time with me but I think it was only after I'd like fully realized that things like that were happening like I really realized that a lot of my position with my mother and honestly all of my family was manipulation and people pleasing and like they knew how to manipulate me into the people pleasing and just feeling like well, we're my family, I have to do this and I have to do that and I didn't fucking want to and there was no option of me saying like this is actually really unhealthy and damaging to me at this point and it's not okay but it's really fucking difficult to get to that point and like to be honest with you like if you go back there's a video on my channel from uh when my mum had been diagnosed with cancer like two months before I cut her out of my life and that was a massively weird catalyst because it both like frankly her narcissistic and like shitty tendencies came into like full force because now she was sick so we had to be there for her and we had to do this for her and we have to do this for her whereas in the past when she wasn't sick it was always oh well I just really need and like I love you so much and you're my you're my daughter and you know like there was always a reason that like you had to but it was put across in a way where like well, you could say no it just showed that you're a terrible person whereas now it was a case of, like you can't say no I'm unwell and I was like you know like it's making me unwell like fuck I say it was a weird catalyst because it both it, it was the push that I needed to be like yo I can't do this anymore like it's I was already struggling with what was going on and it's just increased tenfold and I'm I'm not doing I don't have it in me I cannot do it it was that combined with like well, I can't not do it. My mum has cancer. What kind of asshole stops talking to my mum when she's like just been diagnosed with two types of fucking cancer and undergone brain surgery? Like, who does that? I do that. I did that. You know, and that's where there's another like whole massive load of guilt. I just, that's been like a major thing for me since childhood though which I'm as we make see this is why I enjoy making videos it's as I was like talking about it and saying it then that I was like oh I was like super guilty as a kid because of my mom my mom made me feel guilty about like so many fucking things like anytime I wasn't good enough or I was made to feel really guilty about it and I completely put that on myself I always thought like well if I was good enough I wouldn't have to feel bad but like it was being put on me by my mom she's always been very fucking good at that and it's you know she really like ingrained it in me so now even though I've cut her off and I'm like doing a lot of healing and doing a lot of working on myself I still feel like guilt from her that's why generational stuff's kind of weird and fucked up as well though because I, I do wonder like if my mum feels the same like sort of guilt that I do over things and if that's like from her mum because like I know quite a lot about how my nan treated my mum that I'm not gonna go into because that's definitely not my story and my experience but I know quite a lot about it because emotional support for my mother my entire life so I imagine that the abuse pattern although like parts of it were changed because my mum was like I'm never gonna treat my kids like that some parts of it are, are, are generational trauma and they're gonna be the same and like there's been times that my mum would get really upset and be like I haven't been a good mother have I haven't I haven't done the things that you need like bloody 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 blah, 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 blah lots of lots of horrible things have happened to me and she'd suddenly feel really bad about that apparently but 
it's like did she actually feel that guilt in the way that I do where it's a very like you know not to preach and big myself up but it's a very like selfless guilt and I feel bad for having let someone down and for not being good enough for someone i.e my mother like when she was feeling like telling me that she felt like that about like raising me and my brothers was that a genuine guilt or was it just because she really enjoyed the after effects of us being like, no, you're the best mum, you're great mum, you're, you're fantastic, you did this and this and this, you're brilliant, you're amazing, we don't know what you're talking about, why are you being so silly? You know, because like, I, I don't vocalise my guilt, like I'm, I'm doing it here, I've talked about it online, I talk about a lot of things online that I do not vocalise in like real life to the people around me. So I've, I've never been someone that like vocalises my guilt to get that like, no, actually, you're really good. So that's where I'm like, I know that my guilt isn't like a manipulation tactic. I know that like the guilt I feel is genuine and true and I don't fucking tell people about it most of the time. Whereas my mum does tell people about it so that we like validate her. But also, we should be able to talk to people about things. So like, it's this constant question of if I'm in the right or the wrong or if she's in the right or the wrong. And like if I misread situations to make it seem like it's a certain way and have I overreacted? You know, have I been too much? Have I been... like this is why I've I've left it a good long while to talk about it because I'm still processing and, and figuring out and like fully going through a lot of thoughts and thought like feelings and emotions and stuff about it. But also talking about it and especially like honestly, I kind of find it more useful to make videos than I do to talk to other people because I feel like I've realised I'm quite easily swayed. I really take advice to heart and then like do the advice because I trust the person even though like it might not be the right advice. Like they might not have all, like even if they're good people, they might not have all the context or all of like the knowledge around it. You know, there's lots of reasons you do, shouldn't take advice. But I'm very easily led and swayed to just do what people tell me to or to like see situations in the way that other people are seeing them if they explain them to me and the like. So I, I kind of feel like I'm able to get more of an actual insight to myself and how I feel and what I think about things by doing videos and by like, like I do journal, but I don't find it as helpful as I do videos, honestly. Like I have so many little epiphanies while filming videos where I'm like, oh, this connects to that actually, because I've spoken it out loud and like actually heard it. Like if I'd started doing this sooner, I might have started processing things sooner, but they'd also be useless junk filled videos, I think. And that's what this is. This is just a big long ramble, really. This is me sort of putting the feelers out and being like, have other people been through this? Are other people like looking for this content? Like, is this something that I should actually do? Or is it something I need to just keep in my drafts kind of thing? Just like, I've cut people out of my life before. Like I've got one ex that I need to still get some of my shit back from. And then like both the people that I've been in relationships with, I'm pro like probably never going to speak to again. Like I have no interest in speaking to either of them, you know? There's, there's a lot of friends that I've just cut out and stopped speaking to for one reason or another. Like, I'm used to, like, having someone in my life and then them not being there. Like, my dad died when I was 18. I'm used to having that. And yet, like, most of the time, you know, give it a couple of months, I don't really think about them that often again. Like, it'll pop into my head every now and again. I'll be like, oh, yeah, remember that person? And, like, I know that it's a bigger deal when it's my mother, but it's been nearly a year. Like, why can't I just fucking get over this? I'm gonna wrap this video up here because there's been a lot of me just staring into the distance and not saying shit. So, yeah. I think I've said everything I'm going to say. It's probably, it's, it's definitely not everything I wanted to say because my mind's gone blank. But it's everything I'm gonna say. Um, I, I am a self-promoter YouTuber, but I'm not gonna promote you to like pay me for this video. So like just like and subscribe and follow me on social media if you'd like to links are all down below um I, I tend to talk about being autistic but honestly i do want to sort of branch my content out more because as much as i'm living life as an autistic person there's lots of things about me that are just me being a person you know <laughs> so maybe this is the start of that who knows i've got a vlog that i tried to film i haven't put the bits into edit yet but i'm gonna try to and if it's not a total mess, you'll get to see a vlog of what I did in a day. So there's content to come in if you'd like to subscribe. But for now, I am going to bugger off. I, I upload on Thursdays and Sundays at like 5ish now, UK time. If you wanted to be around for that, I might start doing premieres. I really don't know. 
but I'm gonna shut the fuck up. So whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you're having a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year, and I'll see you again in a couple of days.